Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this simple Ajax application which allows you to make posts like so and you can see that this all happens without a page refresh you can also log in and then the post that you make will be made under your name okay so let's jump straight into the code then now the page is called index.php as it usually is and down here we've got some minimal HTML this is for the form that you fill out the title, the body and uh, it's kept in line with tables there's also an error div, a success div which are there just to receive messages and the post wrap which is actually the div that contains all the posts the majority of the functionality of this application is handled by the JavaScript and uh, we use jQuery here because it's a lot nicer than using bare JavaScript See, jQuery is a great library and um, it makes a lot of things very very easy creating Ajax request is now a lot easier than it was it handles all the uh, browser compatibility behind the scenes which is fantastic so the first function that's executed when you go onto the page is the one that retrieves all the results from the database and renders them and uh, as you can see it's pretty minimal code here, pretty basic so what we do is initiate an Ajax call uh, once the page is loaded um, if you pass into the default jQuery object which you do by referencing with a dollar sign and you pass in a function it will execute that function once the page is fully loaded so it's basically equivalent to saying window.onload inside we initiate the Ajax call um, of the type post you could use get but this is safer and uh, we send the data to forumscript.php which we're going to look at in a second we pass in only one parameter here uh, if you need to know anything about these parameters you can google post parameters or get parameters or something of that nature it's basically just a method of sending data to the server so here it says get all equals true and that's passed in as part of the URL behind the scenes and that's simply a flag telling the server side script which function to execute so let's jump straight into the server side and see what's going on so we look through and we find our get all flag that was passed in it said if the post variable get all is set then execute this code it's pretty simple code we start with a basic SQL query that says select everything from the table CMS posts and order them by ID in descending order we pass that into the basic PHP MySQL query function and we store the result from that query in the all post variable then we pass that variable to the render post function which I've created down here and you'll see this function is used a couple of times also appear when we insert a post so let's have a look at how that works it takes this one argument query which uh, we see passed in here and here first thing we do is initialize the return variable and then we begin looping through the results with the while loop we use the uh, MySQL fetch associative array function and we store it temporarily in the row in this case each row is basically an individual post we take the user ID from that row we store it in the user ID variable and then to actually get the user as a variable we have to execute another little bit of SQL so we say here select everything from the table users where the user ID is equal to user ID that we got here and then we stored that in the user variable in this line we use the ternary operator and it's simply saying if the user ID is greater than zero then they are a real user and we retrieve the value from here if it's not greater than zero then it's a guest and the username is simply guest after that we start to create the HTML that's going to be sent back to the client we store that in the return variable 
Now first off we create a div with a class of post, an ID corresponding to the ID that we retrieved from the database. We output the title, the username and uh, the date which we decrease the size of the font slightly on. We then put the body in and we create a delete button at the bottom and for the delete button we have an on-click function called del so as saying when we click this delete button trigger the del function and pass in a reference to this button. We'll look a bit more at that in a second. When the HTML is returned to the client we say on success r is a reference to the data that we received and we say get the element with an ID of post wrap and change the HTML inside it to the results. If there's any errors we report that as well. We say get the error element, change the text inside it to could not retrieve posts, it's mainly for debugging purposes, and then some animations on that. The next function we're going to look at is the function for adding new posts. Again we start with the jQuery default object and we pass in a function to be executed on body load and we use the jQuery selectors which are basically the same as CSS selectors to say get the element with an ID of title and store a reference to it in this variable here. We do the same for body and the same for error and post trap. Now we get the form which has an ID of add and we say on submit execute this function. And the first thing we do here is a little bit of JavaScript form validation that says if the title is equal to an empty string or the body then we output the error text the post must have both a title and a body and then we return false to cancel the default behavior if there's no problems we initiate another Ajax call of type post to the same script again only this time we pass in the variable title which is equal to title description or body even and uh, we set the flag add to true so we know which function to trigger again. We construct the post parameters by saying title is equal to and then we reference the title element that we did up here, get the value from it, and the same for description, then we add a flag that's saying add equals true, again just to tell us which function to execute on the server side. So let's go over and have a look at that again. We find the add function here, we pick out the title from the post variable that was passed in, same for description, and we store them in these variables here. We also say, using another ternary operator here, if there is a session variable open with the user ID, then we retrieve that and put it in this variable here. If not, we set the user ID to zero, which is basically setting the user as a guest. This is where we insert the post into the database. We say insert into CMS post table with the values null because that's the ID and that's auto incremented, the user ID, the title, the body, and a timestamp which gives us the time and the date. If there's any problems we say or die with the MySQL error. After that we pull the post back out of the database and the only reason we didn't reuse it is because we needed to get the ID that it was given by being put into the database. So we say select everything from the CMS post table, order by ID in descending order again, and we say limit one, which means that we only pick off the top row in the database, which in this case was the last post that we put in. Again, we render that post. So we loop over the only row that went in, and we echo the return back to the client side. When that comes back, we say on success, pass in the return variable, and prepend it to the post wrap div. Instantly, we hide that and we show it over a period of 300 milliseconds, which gives us that sliding in animation there. We also set the success text, just a little message to say post added, which you can also see here. Again, we return false to cancel the basic form behavior. We try to refresh the page.